What's going on, Vinyl community? Welcome to another video with The Record Spinner. In today's video, I'm going to be doing the first episode of a new mini-series that I'm doing on this channel called Favorite Albums of Artists That I Collect. And this is kind of similar to what a lot of other people are doing within the YouTube Vinyl community with things such as top 100 albums lists, uh, go-to albums, things of that sort. Uh, personally, if it was me and I had to come up with a list of 100 albums and rank them in a certain order, it would almost change on a daily basis with albums being swapped in and out, rankings being changed. Um, I give everyone that does those lists a lot of credit because it is a daunting task. Perhaps later on in the future, I'll approach it. But for now, I simply thought that this idea was a bit more interesting and also just something different. And it's just simply easy to look at an artist that you collect and say, yes, that is my favorite album of theirs. And when it came to compiling the list of albums for this series, I kind of made a rule for myself. And that was, I would need to have at least half to most, if not all, of the artist's work that is in my vinyl collection. It kind of made it a bit more fair and also much easier to compile. And in this first episode, we are going to be looking at the letters A to D, and there is a lot of ground to cover, so... Enough of the chit chat, let's jump into what this video is all about. Kicking this list off is ACDC's Let There Be Rock. Uh, this is an absolutely fiery album from these guys. Uh, it includes uh, staples such as um, Let There Be Rock and Whole Lot of Rosie, but we have a whole bunch of other cool tracks on here such as uh, Dog Eat Dog, uh, Bad Boy Boogie, Problem Child, Hell in a Bad Place to Be. Uh, personally, I think this is the album where it all kind of clicked for these guys, and it's so easy to point to things like Highway to Hell and Back in Black uh, for being fantastic ACDC albums because they absolutely are, but for me Personally, my money is on this one as being my favorite ACDC album, Let There Be Rock. And next up are the Bad Boys from Boston, and that is Aerosmith, and the album is Rocks from 1976. Uh, this is perhaps the most raunchiest Aerosmith album that they ever did. Uh, we have Back in the Saddle and Last Child as being the most known songs on this album, but we have some killer songs on here, such as uh, Rats in the Cellar, Combination, Sick as a Dog, Nobody's Fault, Licking a Promise. I mean, this whole album is absolutely killer. And just aside from the musical content, I simply love the artwork that is included with this album. Uh, we have a nice photo collage of the band members from various live shows and recording sessions. And then we have a nice cartoon uh, image of the band here, which I just loved as a kid. And it just stuck with me for the longest time. And it just can't go without saying that this is just absolutely a fantastic album and is surely my favorite Aerosmith album, Aerosmith Rocks. Now, even though this next artist has a very small discography in terms of their solo stuff, I kind of felt the need to show this album off because it has stuck with me for many years and it is indeed my favorite album of his. And that is Sid Barrett of Pink Floyd. And this is his first solo album, The Madcap Laps. Now, it should be said that when it comes to listening to the stuff that Sid wrote with the Floyd and his solo stuff, it's a total night and day difference. And it's honestly kind of sad to listen to his solo albums. But I think uh, this particular album kind of catches him in the best possible light in terms of his work outside the Floyd. Um, there are a lot of different like false starts with some of the songs and some studio dialogue, which kind of makes this album a bit more intimate in terms of listening to it. It seems as if you're in the studio with Sid as he's working out these songs. And I think it kind of gets the best of both worlds because there's songs where he just kind of plays the guitar by himself. And then there's some full band arrangements with things such as... Um, uh, love You, No Good Trying, um, Octopus. Uh, but then again, we have some classic, you know, kind of solo stuff on here like Dark Globe, um, Long Gone, uh, If It's In You, uh, Terrapin. Um, this is just an absolutely beautiful album and is definitely worth checking out. Next up is The Beach Boys' Wild Honey from 1967. This right here is just an absolutely beautiful album. And after kind of going off the deep end with things like Pet Sounds, The Smile Sessions, and then that kind of dissipated, and they tried to kind of 
make something work out of what they had with Smiley Smile. This was an attempt to get back to business and get back to the roots of this great band. And it's a bit uh, in the R&B kind of genre, which is not so much a regular thing for these guys, but this is just full of great songs. Uh, we have the title track, Aren't You Glad, um, Darlin', which is one of Carl Wilson's finest vocal moments, I'd Love Just Once to See You, which is a great, just brief little short song, Here Comes the Night, which has that great kind of chorusy sounding kind of piano let the wind blow um this is just beautiful like i just said and when it comes to approaching the beach boys of course everyone goes to the surf stuff and pet sounds but definitely this album is worth a listen and it wasn't until i approached this album for the first time when i got the smiley smile wild honey two for cd which had those two albums on one cd and when this album came on it was love at first listen, and just from that listen alone, it turned into my favorite Beach Boys album. Next was the daunting task of picking a favorite Beatles album, and you can kind of see what album that is by the top left-hand corner there. Um, it was either this album or Revolver, and it could have gone one way or another because these albums are kind of like part one and part two to each other, even though they are both distinctively different, but I decided to go with the former simply because it has been a longtime favorite for many, many years. I think ever since I was in middle school, this has been my favorite Beatles album. 1965's Rubber Soul. Kind of displaying a bit more of a folky Bob Dylan type of influence with things such as Nowhere Man, In My Life, Michelle, Norwegian Wood. But aside from just the, the classics that are on this, there are also some of my favorite all-time Beatles songs, such as George Harrison's Think For Yourself, which has that nice fuzz guitar tone going on in the song, which just sounded so cool to my ears when I first listened to it as a kid. And then, of course, we have The Word, um, If I Needed Someone, Wait. Uh, this is just an absolutely cool album and a great kind of precursor to what they would kind of do on Revolver, kind of hinting at psychedelia before going full-blown with Sgt. Pepper. Absolutely great album, Rubber Soul. And next up is one of those albums that is just perfect and concise, to the point, no filler, no fluff. It does what it does, and it doesn't overstay its welcome. And that is Black Sabbath's master of reality in terms of the actual songs on this album you have sweet leaf after forever children of the grave lord of this world solitude and into the void along with two brief little tony iomi guitar instrumentals embryo and orchid it doesn't overstay its welcome and it is honestly perfect i think this album would have gotten thrown kind of off course if another song was on here and it's just it's perfect, and you have some of Sabbath's heaviest songs on here, such as Lord of This World and Into the Void. Uh, you have the more mellower moments, like uh, Solitude. Uh, you have them proclaiming their love to the Sweet Leaf, and you have some uh, religious lyrics on here, like in After Forever. Um, this is just an absolutely great record from Sabbath, and it is my all-time favorite, Master of Reality. And up next is another longtime favorite of mine since I was a kid, and that is Low by David Bowie. Uh, at this point in his career, got together with Brian Eno and did the whole Berlin trilogy with this album, uh, Heroes and Lodger. Uh, but with this, uh, he just really embraced a whole kind of ambient European electronic music that was going on at the time with things like Kraftwerk and whatnot. And aside from just the ambient stuff on here, like uh, Warsaw, uh, Subterraneans, uh, Weeping Wall, the songs themselves are great on this thing. You have a Sound and Vision, Always Crashing in the Same Car, Be My Wife, Breaking Glass. Um, it's just one of Bowie's most purest musical adventures. And at this point, he was truly representing himself. You know, it kind of sold, you know, in the lower numbers, but you know, full artistic integrity. And that's one thing that I always give Bowie credit for. And uh, when I'm in the mood for some Bowie, this album is found heavily in rotation on the turntable. David Bowie's low. And up next is indeed the man that is on my t-shirt. And that is Mr. Phil Collins. Hello, I must be going. 
Now, one of the things that I love about Phil Collins' early solo works is that he was very angry. Uh, of course, you know, the solo stuff that he was doing, you know, by himself, along with stuff that he brought to the table for Genesis, um, was very much fueled by the failure of his first marriage. And just, you know, it proved to be, you know, the perfect kind of inspiration to, to deliver a lot of songs. And on this, we have things like I Don't Care Anymore, which is just an absolutely awesome driving tune. Uh, we have I Can't Believe It's True, uh, Do You Know, Do You Care? Of course, you have the cover, which is also the hit on this album, You Can't Hurry Love, uh, Don't Let Him Steal Your Heart Away, um, Through These Walls. I mean, this is just a great in-depth album from Phil Collins, and uh, out of the Phil Collins stuff that I have listened to, this is definitely my most favorite, Hello, I Must Be Going. And next up is a rather uncharacteristic uh, favorite album from this particular artist because it is completely left field of what uh, he was best known for and what he had already established. And this was kind of the first, would you say it's the first kind of major shift in his sound? And that is Alice Cooper, Flush the Fashion from 1980. At this point, uh, he had kind of went into the whole new wave direction, kind of reinvented Alice for better, for worse. Personally, I think he really pulled it off for the kind of time frame. Uh, but this album just fully embraces that new wave genre that he found himself in. Uh, the most notable track on here is Clones Were All. Uh, we have a fantastic tune with the song Pain. Uh, we have some just really quirky, catchy new wave tunes on here, such as um, Aspirin Damage, uh, Grim Facts, Model Citizen, Headlines. I mean, this is just an absolutely fun album. 28 minutes long, which is rather, rather short, but it doesn't, just like Black Sabbath, Master of Reality, doesn't overstay its welcome. And there you can see Alice kind of reinventing himself. And uh, this is just an absolutely great album. And of course, you have the monumental albums like Billion Dollar Babies, Love It to Death, Welcome to My Nightmare. Honestly, this is just one that I really gravitated to the most. Flush the Fashion. Next up is a bit of a newer band, which only has a couple of albums out, but um, but I gravitated a lot to this album when it first came out. And granted, I listened to the other albums in this band's discography, but this one just really struck a note with me at the time, and it had turned into my favorite album by... The Dead Weather, and this is their album Dodge and Burn from 2015. This is a super group. You have Jack White, of course, from the White Stripes, the Rack and Tours, his solo stuff. You got Jack Lawrence, who was in the Greenhorns and the Rack and Tours. Allison Mossart from The Kills. Dean Fertitta uh, from Queens of the Stone Age, and he also played uh, live with the Rack and Tours. This is just a great 12 track garage dirty rock album um it is just absolutely killer uh you have i feel love every million miles buzz killer let me through which just has this nice dirty fuzz bass tone to it a uh, three dollar hat which just has this very frantic middle section uh rough detective mile markers which has this great kind of marching snare kind of riff going on in the drums um, this is just absolutely killer, and it is my favorite Dead Weather album, Dodge and Burn. Next up is an absolutely killer, bluesy, hard rock album from the 70s, and that is Deep Purple's Burn. This is the first album to feature vocalist David Coverdale and bassist slash vocalist Glenn Hughes. And... This album just purely embraces Richie Blackmore's musical direction that he wanted to go in with this band. Uh, you have the title track, Burn, which is just an absolute tour de force. Might just take your life. Lay down, stay down. The funky kind of sail away. You fool no one. The bluesy mistreated. This album is just firing on all cylinders. And um, it is definitely, hands down, my favorite Deep Purple record, Burn. And up next is The Doors' Strange Days. And let's just take a look at the contents on this. You have the title track, Your Lost Little Girl, Love Me Two Times, Moonlight Drive, which is, of course, the first song that Jim Morrison sang to Ray Manzarek on the beach in Venice, which is just a uh, an often recited story that adds to The Doors' folklore. 
uh, people are strange, my eyes have seen you, um, when the music's over, which is the great poetic epic piece on this album. Um, there's just so many great songs on this album to declare it as perhaps the best Doors album and also my favorite. And I think that this album pictures the best kind of musical picture for this band because they're often, you know, regarded as one of the great psychedelic rock bands. And the production on this is truly psychedelic, uh, both in terms of the way that it's mixed, uh, uses a lot of echo chamber, backwards recording, um, in uh, interesting instrumentation going on. Um, it's just an absolutely fantastic, flawless album, The Doors' Strange Days. And next up is an artist which is kind of similar to Sid Barrett in terms of, I guess you could say the genre and also how limited their discography is. So I kind of had to work with what I had. Uh, but this one was kind of a no-brainer because I just really, really love this album. And that is... Brighter Later by Nick Drake. Now, many people will point to Pink Moon as perhaps being the ideal Nick Drake album simply due to its nature of being just him and his acoustic guitar. Uh, but I really love the full band arrangements that are on this record. And also, you have just amazing songs on this. You have Hazy Jane 2, which is just a bit more of an upbeat kind of Nick Drake song. At the Chime of a City Clock, which has some beautiful lush uh, strings. Uh, one of these things first, Poor Boy, Northern Sky, which is just a beautiful track. Um, this is just an absolutely beautiful album and is hands down my favorite Nick Drake album, Brighter Later. And the last album I'm going to show you guys in this video is a hard-hitting 79-minute piece of progressive metal. And that is... Metropolis Part 2, Scenes from a Memory by Dream Theater. An ambitious concept album about reincarnation, and musically, it includes everything that people know and love about Dream Theater, including many nods to the bands that have influenced this great band. Um, it is just absolutely killer from start to finish, and it is quite the journey of a concept album. Uh, you have the instrumental overture, uh, Strange Deja Vu, uh, the heavy Beyond This Life, the very Floyd-esque Through Her Eyes and The Spirit Carries On, uh, Home, which is perhaps the biggest highlight on this album, uh, The Dance of Eternity. If any musician can play that song, they can master anything. And then everything takes a crazy twist at the very end with Finally Free. Um, just... This I I like devoured this album when I was in middle school, uh, getting into this band, and just throughout the years, it has remained my favorite Dream Theater album, Metropolis Part Two, Scenes from Memory, and what a great album to end this video on because that is the end of my first episode of the favorite. Uh, albums of artists that I collect series. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead, give it a like, and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support this channel, be sure to check me out on Patreon. See you guys in the next video, and most importantly, keep the record spinning.